Hello everybody, welcome to the Free Life Do You Female Series. I am Ramona Jones and I'm so excited about what's been happening. This is day two and last night was an awesome, awesome experience with my daughter Love Jones and that was our teen series. So if you want to again be a part of that, we will be re-airing that. But today is live and it's in effect. We have the women coming up today and I hope that you are blessed by what is happening, what's going to happen today. I know it's going to be something that will change your life and change your situation forever. So make sure you just sit back, relax, tune in, enjoy yourselves. Let's get started. Yeah. 
Hello, everybody. I am Rosalind Gunn, Free Life Church. Uh, I hope you guys have an awesome day. Remember, God is the key, and faith unlocks the door. And keep praying. Let us go into prayer right now. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you on today, Lord. We thank you for our health and strength. Glory to your name. We thank you for being here, Lord. We thank you for seeing another day that we've never seen before, Lord. And we just come to you, Lord, in prayer, thanking you and praising you for all your many blessings you bestowed upon us, Lord. Help us to realize, Lord, that without you, we're nothing. Lord, I ask you to bless the, the youth, Lord, on today, Lord. As they continue to go back to school, Lord, we ask you to keep your guardian angel round about them, Lord. We ask you to bless the teachers and the principal and everybody that's working in the school, Lord. We ask you to continue on, Lord, to protect our children, Lord. We ask you to continue on to protect your people, Lord, in the name of Jesus, Lord. We know this virus is going rapid, Lord, but long as we have our trust in you, Lord, you are able to bring us through and see us through. For we should not fear because we have a beautiful God. We have the biggest God. We have the creator that's watching over us and protecting over us, Lord. We ask you to bless the depressed on this morning, Lord. The people that's going through financial problems, Lord. The people that's going through depression, Lord. The people that's going through marriage problems, Lord. The people that's going through, they don't know what they want to do, Lord. We ask you in your precious name, Lord, to bring them back. For you said you are married to the backsliders, Lord. For those who are confused, Lord, and don't know what to do, Lord, we ask you to bless them to come back to you, Lord. We ask you to help us to continue to follow in your spirit and let your will be done in our life. Help us to be role models for you, Lord, for we're here to serve you. We're here to serve your kingdom and bring people to your kingdom, Lord. Keep our mind, our heart, and our soul, and our body, Lord, for without you, Lord, we're just a walking shell. We're dead, Lord. So we ask you to let your spirit continue on to shine in us. Help us to continue on to lift you up and praise you, even though we're going through bad times, Lord, our trials and tribulation. But, Lord, you did say it come to make us strong. So, Lord, we're not depending on ourselves, and we're not depending on others. We're not looking at what's going on in the world, but we're looking up to you, the author and finisher of our faith. And, Lord, we just want to praise you and thank you, Lord. And you lead us and guide us, and not let our flesh lead us and guide us. And we'll forever praise you, Lord, for you're a good God. And we will continue on to serve you and worship you and do your will forever in your precious name, in Jesus' name. Glory. Hallelujah. Welcome, welcome, welcome to free life, to free life. Welcome to free life, y'all. We love this church. You able to come in here and praise God. You able to come in here and not feel stressed. You able to come in here and dance. You able to come in here and sing, even though you can't sing like me. But that's all right. I'm coming to praise God. And this is the church you want to be in because young people, I'm old. Y'all young. I know y'all can get y'all dance on and, and whatever that is, but I can do it too. But in my own 54 age. Why did the robber jump in the shower? Because he wanted to make a clean getaway. Ha ha ha. <laughs> oh, what do you call a running chicken? Fast food. <laughs> Why do bees have sticky hair? Because they use honeycombs! <laughs> what do you call a cow with no legs? Ground beef. Got a joke for you. What did the egg say when he went to the party? Omelette! What did the buffalo say to his son when he left for college? Bye, son. <laughs> Why don't ants get sick? Because they have little antibodies. <laughs> what do you call a joke that's lame? A dead joke! <laughs> What is paper without writing? Ha <laughs> ha! I don't know. That's why I asked you. 
<laughs> Why did the invisible man turn down the job offer? Because he couldn't see himself doing it!
Okay, at this time, it is time uh, to uh, raise our offering. It's offering time here at uh, Free Life and our Free Life service. Uh, just so you know, this is an opportunity for you uh, to put a seed in the ground and expect something. Don't just sow uh, just out of a ritual or just sow just to be sowing. You want to sow and expect God to put his super on top of your natural seed and accelerate the momentum in your life. Uh, these, these sowing is a principle. I have practiced it. I have preached it and other people that I preached it to practiced it and it is tested, it is tried and it is true. Uh, so uh, at this time you can sow your seed. Uh, there are several ways to give here at Free Life. You can give through Cash App, you can give through PayPal or you can give uh, by way of uh, the website. So at this time, go ahead. Uh, this is your opportunity uh, to sow your seed and plant your seed and receive this word. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We thank you, God, for another day. We thank you for this opportunity to come together. We thank you, God, for this female series here at Free Life. We glorify your name and praise your name right now. Lord, I pray that you speak through my vocal cords. You think through my mind. It's all of you and none of me. I thank you, Lord, that you use me as a vessel right now to bring forth the word that will change your people's lives forever. I thank you for it in advance. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. Well, we want to welcome you to the Free Life Do You Female Series. This is day two. I'm Ramona Jones. I'm one of the pastors here with my husband, Canton Jones, and we're so excited to, you decided to tune in live with us today. We are excited about whatever's going to happen through the Word of God today. I just, I feel like something big is going to happen, something, uh, a revelation that will change all of our lives forever, not just yours, but mine as well. I receive whatever God has for both of us. So let's just jump right in. Um, if you have been tuning in yesterday as well, my daughter, Love Jones, took over service. And so she did all the things that she wanted to do for day one. And it was amazing just to see the things that uh, came out of her. Um, this pretty much what this series is about. It's, it's called Do You because of all the things that God has given us. He's given us all of these talents and these skills and these blessings and all of these things he put in us. And I wanted her specifically to just show all the things that God has put in her. So she was able to sing, rap, and do her fashion and play basketball, all the things that you guys saw yesterday. So we will be re-airing that so that you uh, can see that if you missed that yesterday. So this part, uh, today, the things that you saw today were amazing as well for the, the young ladies. Uh, we had our powwow earlier, and man, that was great, just to chill out and have our little summer party and just do the things that we wanted to do, you know, just take over, kind of, while hubby was gone. But we're uh, excited about what's going to happen next for all of us. Um, do you, I just kind of want to explain it now. I had, you know, I had the things that I wanted to do. The my, I had all my notes and and I had my slides and I had everything that I wanted to say today. And do you, how many do you know that God just kind of like, okay, that's fine. You can write all that down. You can type all of that out. But I have something else for you to say. And that's exactly what happened. I I, I came here today and I said, you know what? All of you and none of me. So if you want me to say something different, if you want me to go in a different direction, then I will do that. And so um, the title was Do You, and I wanted to uh, show that God placed a lot of things in us. He, um, he wanted us to use all of those gifts freely as long as we involved him. He wanted us to use it for the upholding and the, and the advancement of the kingdom of God. And so... Um, being able to do that through all of our talents, our music, dance, graphics, uh, all the things that, that, that God has shown us and taught us, I wanted to use for him. So I'm excited that we were able to do that in this series. Let's just go ahead and jump into the word. Um, I started off with Matthew, Matthew chapter 25. And this is the story of, or the parable of the talents. And if you don't know it, I'm just going to go through it really quickly because it's, it's pretty long. But it's basically about a man 
who uh, went on a journey and he left all of his possessions with his servants. So he had three servants. He left, and they're called talents, the possessions that he had. He called them talents in the word. And um, he said that uh, for you, I will give you five talents. For you, I will give you uh, two talents. And for you, I will give you one talent. And basically, he left, and he expected them to do something with those talents. And all of this is symbolic. It really is. But even though these are his actual possessions, it's symbolic to where, where I'm going right now. So just make sure you keep tuning in. But when he came back, he asked all of a sudden, okay, how many, what did you do with the talents while I was gone? What did, what did you, how did you make this better for me? And so he asked the one with the five talents, and the, the, the servant with the five talents said, I doubled it. And I went and I, uh, I traded with other people, and I doubled what you uh, gave me, so here you go, here's ten. And so the man said, you've done great Thank you, my uh, great and faithful servant. And so he did the same thing with the man with the two talents. And the same thing, he, he was able to say, you know, I did this with the talents, and I brought you more. And so this is what he did with the third uh, servant with the one talent. And I'm going to go right into the word. It's Matthew chapter 25, verse 25. And this is what he said, and I'm reading the Amplified. He said, so I was afraid to lose the talent. This is the servant. And I went and hid your talent in the ground. See, you have what you own. But his master answered him. This is verse 26. You wicked, lazy servant. You know that I reap the harvest where I did not sow and gather where I did not scatter seed. This is verse 27. Then you ought to have put money... You ought to have put my money with the bankers, and at my return, I would have received my money back with, with interest. So he's basically saying, you could have at least invested with the bankers, and I've got, I could have gotten interest off of it, something. But in, instead, you went and decided to hide it. And so this is verse 28. So take the talent away from him and give it to the one who has ten talents. So the first servant, the one with five and doubled it. He took his one talent and gave it to the one who had five and doubled it to ten. And so what I believe happened here, it says um, in verse 25, uh, so I, and this is the Amplified again, so I was afraid, so I was afraid to lose the talent. He was afraid. He was afraid. He thought that what you entrusted me with, I would lose it. So I wouldn't even take, I won't even step out in faith and, and, and trade with the other bankers or trade with somebody or, 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 or plant it somewhere so that it can grow and reap a harvest. He said, I was afraid. How many of us are afraid? How many of us have these talents and we are afraid to use them? And then he goes on to say, see, you have what you own. But his master says, you're wicked and, you la and you're lazy. He called the man wicked and lazy. When, in fact, he was just afraid. He was just afraid. He wasn't um, wicked and lazy. He probably didn't think he was. But the way that the, the, the master saw him was you're wicked and you're lazy because you took what I gave you and you did nothing. You, you hid what I gave you. And you were afraid. Why were you afraid? Is this the same thing we think? Uh, uh, with, with the gifts that God has given us. I, I can attest to that myself. I've been to so many different women's conferences and ladies' meetings and uh, women's Bible studies, and I always hear kind of the same thing, that, you know, your destiny and your purpose and this is what you should be doing, and you're not supposed to be doing that, but you're supposed to be doing this. And, you know, and I took that. I took that, and I said, okay, now, all right, so I have all of these talents, God. Which one of these do you want me to do? Which one of these do you want me to do? I just want to be in your will. My, my whole thing, my entire life, I, not even just my adult life, but even when I was younger, I always felt like I just want to be in your will. I just want to make you happy. I just want to make you proud of me. I just want to uh, uh, fulfill the will of God for my life. That's all I wanted to do. And so I felt like, you know, there's this one thing that I'm supposed to be doing. So if I decide to go and be a painter when I'm supposed to be a singer, then I'm out of the will of God. When I decide to uh, do graphics instead of being a singer or be this instead of that, or this, you know, I, I felt like I was at this perpetual uh, fork in a road. 
And usually the fork in the road is like one and two. No, I had like all of these roads that I could choose, and I never knew which one to go down because I always wanted to make sure I was pleasing God. Never knowing, of course, that I learned later that if you just pick a place, pick a road, God will guide you. He will guide you. Even if you're going down the wrong road, he will still say, okay, he'll nudge you to the left, say, get back on track. But at least, at least you're going. At least you're moving. That's why it's do you. The do you series means you have to do something. You can't just sit there and, and, and think that it's just going to fall out of heaven what you're supposed to be doing. You have to go somewhere so he can say, okay, all right, you're doing that. All right, go left, go right. But at least you're going. You're doing something. And all he really wants is to be with us. All he really wants is to be with us. I want to go to the next scripture. We're going to have to go to the beginning. And that's Genesis. Let's look at Genesis chapter 2. I feel like when you want answers, go to the beginning. Go to where it all began. Verse 2. I'm sorry, chapter 2. And we will start with verse 15. And right here, he has created Adam. And um, this is right before he took the rib out to make Eve. And he's basically telling him, okay, now this is what you can do. This is what you can do. You can eat of all of these trees. You can eat of everything you see except this one tree, this one tree of the knowledge of, the, of good and evil. I don't want you to partake in that. And just looking back at being, uh, I guess, young in the faith, I always thought, now, why would God create something that I can't have? Like, why tell me I can have all of this stuff and then tell me this one thing you can't have? And so as I got older and as I grew up, I realized that God is not, our lives are not a perpetual test. God is not just always testing us. What he wants is for us to have a choice and to choose him. He doesn't want, he didn't create a bunch of robots. He created free will, more free moral agents that can make a decision. He, don't, he wants us to choose him. That's the ultimate love. He wants us to choose him over that tree or choose him over that job or choose him over this relationship he wants us to make a choice and say okay I love you more God than I love my car or my house or my possessions or this tree and so what the word is saying right here I'm going to go back to that what the word is saying right here after he made Adam uh, let's look at verse 15. So the Lord took the man, and this is still the Amplified version. He took the man and settled him in the Garden of Eden to cultivate and keep it. And the Lord commanded the man, saying, you may eat freely, unconditionally, eat from any tree of the garden, but only from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil shall you not eat. And otherwise on that day that you eat from it, you shall most certainly and surely die. So he said you can have everything except for this one tree because once you eat from that, you will most surely die. And what happened was when, you know what, let's read it. Let's go to Genesis 3. Genesis 3. And let's look at verse 5. And so now Eve is in the picture. And I, you know that we uh, here at Free Life believe that Eve was always in the picture. That's why God was able to pull her from him. So she got the same directives. Please believe and understand that she got the same directives. This wasn't the first time she heard this. She heard everything that God said about eating all of, of all the trees, but don't eat from that one. So it wasn't like, well, she didn't know. I've heard so many people say that. Well, she wasn't there, and she didn't know. Yes, yeah, she knew. She knew. Uh-huh. She sure did. I'm going to tell you why she knew. Because here in verse 5, she's talking to the serpent, and she's basically saying, yeah, I know all that. Let's look at verse 5. For God knows that one day you eat from it, and your eyes will be open." 
and you will be like God, knowing the difference between good and evil. This is the serpent talking. And, sh and it goes on to say, and when the woman saw that the tree was good for food and that it was delightful to look at and the tree is to be desired, she took, she took some of the fruit and ate it. And she also gave it to her husband. And so he knew and she knew, but she, they both decided, you know what, it looks good. And yes, I would like some more wisdom. But you're walking with God. Why do you need more wisdom? Well, let's talk about that. The serpent was not lying. He said that when you eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, your eyes will be open. You will have wisdom. And you shall surely die. That means the, t the, the time has come into place. See, they were living out of time. They were never going to die. They were never getting old. None of that happened. So as soon as they ate from that tree, they turned on time. And then they began to die immediately because the time, they, they put themselves into time. And so their eyes were open and they saw that they were naked and they, and they, and they decided to hide themselves from God and decided to sew these figs so they can cover themselves. Their eyes were open. When all of, when all of, the all of this time, all they had to do was walk with God. That's all they had to do. God would have told them everything. If they had asked the right questions, if they had said, you know, why can't we eat from the knowledge of the... I don't think God would have been like, because I told you so. I think he would have said, you know what, this is what happens. And even though they may have asked over and over and over again, generations and generations of Adams and Eves would have asked the same question. God would have freely said, you know what, I give to you uh, wisdom freely. I will tell you what it is, but they decided to go on their own, to do it without God, and that is a scary place to be. Any place to be without God is not a safe place. It's not a scary, it's not a, a, a great place to be because God knows everything. We don't know it all. We think we know it. We try to know it all this. Uh, of course, as teenagers, we wanted to know it all and say, well, I know, and I know, and I know, and I don't need to ask mom and dad when in fact they live the same lives that you live, so why not ask them? That's just like God. God already knows. He knows the end from the beginning, the beginning to the end. Why not ask him? Why not involve him? All he wanted all this time was to walk and talk and abide with us. That's it. He wasn't keeping anything from us. He wasn't keeping anything from us. So all of these talents, all of these things that God has put in us, there's not just one way. There's not just one way. Why would he put all of that in me? Why would he tell, why would he give me the desire to sing and to write and to rap and to dance and to play the piano and to do graphics and to do flyers and to be a mom and to do all of these things and then turn around and say, but I still want you to do this one thing. That's not how that works. That's not, that, that's not how that works. That's not destiny and purpose. That's not a real thing. God wants you to do it all. Just do it with him. He wants you to be the mom and the, and the, and the jazz singer and the dancer and the, and the wifeager and all those things that I am. He wants you to do all of those things. And it took me a while to realize that I could do it all of those things as long as I involve him into what I'm doing. As long as I'm walking and talking and saying, okay, what do I do here? What do I do? All the stuff that I learned, I didn't even learn in school. All of the behind the scenes, ele electric technologies, things that I've learned, I've, that stuff came straight from God. I didn't go to school for any of that, but I know it well. And he just wants us to involve him in everything that we do, every decision that we make. I had a humongous fear to step out and have a career, especially after I, I had my first child. I just felt like I can't be a mom and have a career. It's just they, they didn't go together to me in my mind. I just didn't understand. How do you do that? How do you do that and not neglect your marriage or your child? How do you? I don't understand. But if I had involve God in every step and every decision, I think I would have, I don't know. I don't know. I think I would have been doing things differently. But now that I know that, I wanted to share that with you guys. Don't be afraid to use all of the gifts that are in you. Don't be afraid to um, just walk with God. 
Just walk with them. I know it's scary. I know faith is scary. It is, but it's always the best choice. You have faith over fear. Why would I want to choose fear? Why is fear such a, a stable and uh, uh, something that we just know? I don't want to be so familiar with fear and not faith. I want to step out at all times. Every, every moment, every day, I want to step out in, in faith and know that when I step out, he's with me. He's with me, and he's, he's abiding in me. He's talking through me. He's helping me make decisions. He's doing uh, everything to make his people win, his kingdom win. And I just wanted to, to share that with you guys. I wanted to share that with you guys because I feel I, I've heard a resounding, the same type of thing over and over again. What is my purpose? What should I be doing? What is my purpose? What should I be doing? Well, what do you love to do? What do you love to do? You like to write. You like to sing. You like to dance. What is it that you like to do? That's your purpose. God put desires in, the desires of your heart. He put those in you. Just involve him. Just include him in everything that you do. It's simple. It's easy. I know you say it's simple. It's easy. Well, you just have to step out. It's unfamiliar territory. Okay, I get it. But sometimes you got to go somewhere that you've never been. That's called growing up. I know you don't want to hear that. I know you're saying I'm grown and no, you, we're all still growing up. As long as you're still alive and breathing, you're forever growing up. I'm growing up. I've learned things just in the past few months that I didn't know. But you're always growing up. You're always changing. You're always getting better. You're always getting, you're not at your best. You're always getting better. You're better than yesterday. Yes, of course. But you're always getting better. You're always getting better. You're always getting better. You're not always right. Even as a mom, I know that's hard to hear. But mom is not always right. She's still learning. Let's learn together. When you're with your kids and, and, you, and you feel like, you know, you, I know what's best for you. I know what's best for you. Sometimes you need to just hear from them. Just, even if you know what they're about to say is something you said 20 years ago, still, you want to listen to what they're saying. You want to make sure they have some kind of input. You know what that is? That's the same relationship that Adam and Eve and God were dealing with. God was their parent. God already knew the answers. He already knew everything, but he still wants to hear from you. He still wants you to tell him, all right, this and that and these. Should I do that? Should I make this decision? Of course he already knows all the answers, but he wants to, uh, by, he wants to have that relationship. Just like your kids, same thing. You may know all the answers. You're like, girl, I did the same thing. But still, sit there and listen. That's all they want. That's all they want from you. It's time for us to abide with God. It's time for us to fully walk with him. It's time for us to fully trust him and not be in fear. Not be the one with the one talent. Hide in it because you're afraid. What are you afraid of? Why are you afraid? That talent was the, was the master's. That talent is God's. That singing gift is God's anyway. Why are we hiding it? It's not even yours. It's not even yours. Use it. Multiply it. Make it bring in more, more kids and more children for the kingdom. That's what you're supposed to do, not to hide it and be afraid that it's not right, it's not the right time, and all of that, all the fear that keeps coming out, all the you're not good enough, you don't do it like they do. All of that doesn't matter. None of that matters as long as you are walking and abiding with our Heavenly Father. Lord, we thank you for today. We thank you, Father, for the word that's coming forth. We thank you, Father, that it will change the life of your people and the, all the ears that were listening. We thank you and we love you, Father, just for this opportunity. We praise your name and we give it all to you. We walk not in fear, but we walk in faith. We don't hide our talents. We don't hide our skills, Lord, but we use them to uplift and uphold your kingdom so that it may take over this world, Lord. We thank you, Father, and we glorify your name. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, I'm glad you guys were here today, and make sure you are walking in faith and not fear. You won't, you don't, you wouldn't
you shouldn't, you can't, but please don't listen, because they are lies, because they are lies, you can't get caught up in what people say, they will have you going astray, follow God, he will lead the way, keep your eyes to the skies, and keep soaring high. Give the world the one and only you The phenomenal you People might do what you do But they can't quite do it like you Let your gifts make room Watch your dreams go zoom Now unto him that is able to do Exceeding and abundantly According to the power Like good times. 